Hey guys, what's up? It's Monkles on King. Welcome to the next top 10 video. This time we're going to be doing things a little bit differently. I decided for the end of the year what we'll do is a top 10 updates, but instead of just doing top 10 best updates or top 10 worst updates, it's going to be five good ones and five bad ones. And this will be my personal vote of what were the five best updates of the year and the five worst updates of the year. I do have to thank this guy for the suggestion as well as all of you who have suggested to do one of these on the updates in all of the various YouTube comments as well as the streams. So thank you a lot to that and also just keep in mind that this is opinionated so feel free to make a case for what you feel were your favorite or least favorite updates of the year down in the comment section below. Also I will be 100% leaving Treasure Hunter out of this. No Treasure Hunter updates whatsoever and yes I do realize that Treasure Hunter came out this year as well and also I'll be trying to keep Solomon's store to a minimum as well but there is one Solomon's store update that we will have to address because it was pretty bad. But with that being said, let's go ahead and get into this video and talk about some of the best and worst updates of the year. Number five on the list for me would have to be the Legacy Mode release, and I will be the first to admit I do not use Legacy Mode personally. I've only used it in very, very rare occasions, mostly only for video making, testing out how it compares to abilities, that sort of stuff. So this isn't really something that I personally enjoy the gameplay of, but one thing that I really, really enjoyed about this update is just what it did for a community. There's a lot of people in the game who still do not like using abilities for combat, and it also helped bring back many new people to the game. I've had a lot of people talk to me in either my friend's chat or just in YouTube comments saying they came back because of legacy mode and they really do appreciate that Jags decided to put that in the game and yes even though it's slower than abilities I do realize that there are people who just really really don't like the newer style of combat and really miss the older style so it's good that just for people like that they do have the option with the legacy mode I'm really glad that that was in the game and I'm really glad it was made available for newer players to come back to the game and then possibly even give using the abilities a chance give learning how to PVM, doing higher level bosses, some of the really fun content that RS3 has to offer a chance, all because the Legacy Mode was released. So for the game as a whole, I felt like this was a really good update, and I'm really glad it's in the game now. Now we start off with the worst updates of the year, and number five for the fifth worst update of the year, and I'm very surprised that there were four updates that I actually considered worse than this one, was holy moly. And the problem that I have with the giant mole buff where they changed around how the boss fight works, and admittedly the boss fight is a little bit better now than it used to be. It used to be you just run around and the mole would dig at random. Sometimes he would dig when you just got one hit off on him and it could be incredibly frustrating. Now he digs at set intervals and every single place where he goes to a new spot is a new type of the fight and it introduces new combat mechanics. So that part about the mole is pretty cool and that's really the only reason why he was subjected to the fifth spot and maybe not higher on this list but the reason why the mole is on this list is just because the loot is so incredibly underwhelming. The only thing that you have to look forward to from this boss is a Dragon 2H which is around 800k and really not a whole lot even if you are a lower level player and don't have access to a lot of the better money making methods. You can just go kill dragons which are a lot easier than killing the giant mole and make better money so there's just no reason to go to this boss unless you really enjoy the boss fight itself or if you're going for final boss but the loot is just so incredibly underwhelming. I can't really see even lower level players wanting to go to this fight because of that. The fourth best update of the year is the Araxor boss fight release and this was the only major boss that came out this year and no I'm not counting the giant mole rework as a boss that came out this year but the Araxor boss fight as a boss fight itself I thought was really good. It does present a challenge even for players that have gotten several kills it's still going to be extremely challenging as you get up into the higher end rages and for people that are not extremely experienced with killing Araxor they're really going to struggle and will not be able to get many many kills in one day so the boss isn't campable until you're really experienced with it which I really like about the boss and it just does so much damage on the phase 4 when her or rage gets really high that it does present quite a bit of a challenge and I really like that about the boss itself that the boss fight is difficult even though the boss has been out for months and people have been able to break it down and learn the most efficient ways to kill it, there's still people struggling with that and that's cool to see. Unfortunately, I really have never agreed with the way that the drops work and I never thought that it was a good idea to have a solo boss drop the best tier weapons in the game. But overall, just if you look at this as a piece of content by itself and not really how it affects the economy, I thought it was really well done overall in general and it did present a challenge and a really nice way for PVMers to get their fix with killing some Araxor and camping it and getting their sticks made and let's just keep our fingers crossed for more boss fights in the future and hopefully multiple boss fights per year would be really really nice to see. 
The fourth worst update of the year, in my opinion, on this list it might come as a surprise to some of you, and this might just come across as a minor annoyance and something that's not really that big of a deal, but I can tell you right now this has negatively affected me a lot, as well as many of my friends who have lost some major untradeable items in order of this, and this update was drag and drop, and unfortunately, this update also came out hand-in-hand in hand with another very, very good update, which we might in fact be seen later on in this video on the other side of things in the positive updates but drag and drop i will admit it can be convenient in some situations but just due to the fact that if you're lagging and you click an item at the top of your inventory and it will drop it it is so annoying i have had friends who have lost void pieces to this which is incredibly annoying and i just constantly drop my potions my overloads sometimes even my weapons and armor while bossing it's extremely annoying and it can be really dangerous if you drop something important and forget to pick it up and then you can lose it that way or if you drop an untradeable and then it gets destroyed and overall drag and drop it can be nice however even the slightest bit of lag can cause you to drop stuff sometimes and just because of that i found this update to be incredibly annoying and something that i really wish never came into the game and we didn't have to wait long to find out what the good update was on the same day that drag and drop came out and this is bank presets and these have just completely revolutionized skilling Probably the activity in the game that benefited more from Brank presets than anything else is making overloads, but it doesn't even just apply to skilling. If you are a PVMer or a Slayer or just like to withdraw stuff from your bank that is the same stuff all the time, then Bank presets are going to come in incredibly handy. I use these all the time while skilling, even while just fire making. It's a little bit faster to click the bank and then press the one or two button than it is to right click and withdraw an inventory of logs. So for skilling, this has made skilling a hundred times better. It's super Super, super handy for herb runs as well. If you do farming runs, I'd recommend to set one up for farming. That's what I've done, and it's really changed my mind on how farming works. But overall, I love bank presets, and I'm incredibly glad they're in the game. They have helped out this killing so much. So I did want to leave Treasure Hunter and Solomon's General Store completely out of this, but there is one item that was just too bad, and it didn't really have to, anything to do with the price of the item, so it's not really about the in-app purchase, if you will. It's more about how the item was made and also how broken it was, and this is the Wealth Evaluator. So the first issue I have with this item is you can only rent it on release. Now you can buy one permanently, but when it first came out, you could only rent one for two weeks. You could not keep it permanently no matter how many rune coins you you were willing to spend and then also it would price check a whole lot of untradeable items and stuff that just does not count towards your bank value one example of this is it would price check your player on ports armor which you obviously can't trade this is the untradeable version obviously and it would give it crazy high ge values another issue is it would price check degraded tier 90 weapons as way higher than they actually were in price so it was just broken and could not give you an accurate evaluation of how much your bank was worth and it is really a shame because it was a cool concept for an item it's really cool to be able to show off to your friends or clanmates how much your bank is worth if you're the kind of person who's into that kind of stuff or if you're just not willing to take the 10 minutes to withdraw everything and price check it yourself and of course you also have that validation with other people like this is how much the bank is worth but of course it was just so broken it really ruined the release of the wealth evaluator and it has been fixed and updated a little bit now but at release this was a terrible item the second best update of the year, in my opinion, was the Revolution update, and this is for the lazy escapers who should enjoy this one quite a bit. And I will admit, when Revolution first came out, I talked bad about it all the time. And the reason for that, because a lot of people have asked me, why did you used to hate Revolution in some of your older videos? And the reason for that is because when Revolution first came out in March, there was a delay when you first attack someone, and your character would use like between two to three auto attacks before he would actually wake up to the fact that he should be using abilities because Revolution was on. It was extremely annoying and it really, really hurt the kill speed of kills and made full manual much better. However, that was fixed during the summer and now there is no delay when attacking enemies and Revolution is absolutely amazing. It turned me into a Revolution addict within perhaps a week of that update came in, coming out and I'm really glad it's in the game. I use it for almost everything other than a few PVM situations. Revolution is always on for me and I'd really recommend it for everyone to try it out as well. And I just think this was an exceptional update because it helps with a lot of that ability spamming, which even for the most RS3 happy people did really grind on you after a while. And it kind of sucked to use all those basic abilities. Number two out of my least favorite updates of the year was Balthazar's Raffle. And the main thing that I didn't like about this one, and I do have to say, before we get into talking about the raffle at all, I did get fairly lucky. I won almost every single week with the raffle, so this is not coming out of the bitterness of my heart. I will be the first to admit I got extremely lucky with the raffle and I won death touch darts every single week except one. 
However, that does not change the fact that I really wish it never happened because it was just such a strange update. Let's randomly throw in a raffle where you can win prizes for what reason? Really for no reason other than to promote buying membership, I suppose, because that was the only requirement in which to do it. And then you could get an additional ticket a day doing daily challenges. So it encourages people to do daily challenges, I guess. But other than that, it just seemed like a random reward for doing nothing. And it was so incredibly luck based. There was a lot of people who got incredibly lucky with their raffle tickets, whatever they decided to put the reward in, and some people that got incredibly unlucky. And I hate stuff that's in the game and is completely RNG based for no reason whatsoever. It didn't make a whole lot of sense. And then it was done again with the Christmas raffle, and I didn't see the Christmas idea as as bad because it is during the December season, so the possibility of winning gifts makes a little bit more sense. But overall, both of those updates I really just could not stand. Now it's finally time for the absolute best update of the year and the absolute worst update of the year, but first we're going to go positive and go with the best update of the year. It's Elf City. Really, what did you expect? Of course it's the best update of the year, by far the biggest update of the year because there's just so much content. It had to come out in two different batches and this was also the subject of the first major poll of the year when they asked us whether we would rather have a new skill or Elf City and the vast majority voted for Elf City and I can't say I blame them because this update was amazing. There's a great job done with it and there's so much content. New Slayer Master, you gotta love that and so many new ways to train skills and so many new various activities such as mining the Crystal Flasks or doing the harps and of course every time the new hub world for the entire game shifts over to a new city you gotta realize that that new city is probably doing something right most of the higher level community hangs out here whether that's a good or a bad thing is up for you to determine but all in all the L city has so much to offer and i cannot stress how worth it it is to finish that plague's end quest and gain access to this city yourself if you have not done so yet the number one worst update of the year is something most of you probably did not expect, but this is going to be character name cleanup. And the idea itself is maybe not the worst thing in the world. Let's release some of these old names that aren't being used anymore so new accounts or people that want to change their name might be able to have them. Good idea, right? But it was really the execution of the update itself and all the bugs, glitches, server crashes, and even issues months down the road with Iron Man trying to create their account and not being able to name their Iron Man account because of the name change cleanup, which is why I consider this update also the worst of the year. On top of all that, there's even people that tried to stockpile names on newbie accounts that they never were going to use in an attempt to sell them to higher level players for a humongous amounts of cash as well which really made this update very very ugly and in a sense ruined it although there's positives and negatives to every update and the fact that you can change your name to something that might have been lost forever had this cleanup not happened is a good concept there was so many issues with the update itself which is really why it caused such a huge mess and the reason why i consider this the worst update of the year on top of the fact that it was drug out over a period of several weeks as more and more names were released and more and more glitches happened as a result. That's about all for this video. Thank you guys for watching, and don't forget to leave down in the comments what you consider were your best and worst updates of the year, as well as what I should do next for the top 10 series, because I will be basing that off of one of your guys' suggestions, hopefully, if I get a pretty good one that sounds interesting. Also, the rest of the top 10 videos are linked on screen, as well as in the description of this video if you want to check them out, and I will see you guys next time. Farewell.